we've been doing music and we've been inspired by those who mentored us all the way back from uh, the Ebony's, you know, the original Ebony's, not the current, but the original well-drilled musicians of the time, all the way to Afrigo, Outbreak before Mick Stalin. So all these are the people who helped us get some grounding in music. So I've been seeing this um, music fraternity in Uganda from way back. So I would like to talk about music and its power, music, the spirit. The thing is that the first global village on the planet has always been music. Because music is the one thing that unites every being. You know, every being makes music. So music and musicians have always been privileged for thousands of years. If you go to kingdoms or royal palaces, anywhere in the world, there's a music section. There are royal court musicians. Music has to be there. Music has to be there for worship. Music has to be there when people are giving birth. Music is there when people are dying. Music is when people are sick. So there's a song for everything. That's the power of music. I've been hearing about funding in, in the arts. I think when, when we were starting out, even you know, when we started bringing musicians here, the main point was to promote music by showcasing musicians who are better than us here to help us aspire to become better musicians. You know, people who only used to see on TV or hear on radio, it made sense for us to bring them here. At the time, there was literally zero production ability in this country. We had to fly in everything, which was extremely expensive. Things that are being taken for granted now did not exist here when we started. Everything had to be flown in, from this mixing desk to the drum kit. Everything we had to use had to be at the spec of what the international artists wanted. So people like Andrew Gassira, when he started, you know, with Lucky Dube, that project, everything was flown in from South Africa. A huge cost, which didn't make business sense, but somebody had to do it. So when it comes to art, somebody has to always plant the seed. And not only plant the seed, but also nurture that seed to make sure it grows. Because everything literally comes from the ground. If you do not have any grounding, it's impossible to thrive. So everything starts from the root the ground so somebody had to plant that seed unlike visual arts like uh, cinematography and um, painters sculptures people left all sorts of other jobs and all sorts of other things to join music because they could earn a living from it so you got all this stack of all sorts of quantity which affected the quality of our creativity in music I think the people who are visual artists like you know, designers and painters retrospectively have benefited from not being funded. They've remained with only those people who are actually called to be artists in their fraternity. They were to be for now, nobody joins. So those who are there are actually there because they're artists. Whether they are earning or not, they, they, they've, they've stayed the course, they've planted their seed, they've nurtured it, and they will harvest that seed. Many great artists do not earn a thing, Picasso and them people, you know. So I think they other artists have benefited the sculptors. Nobody knows these people. They are not that exposed to us here, but their works are found everywhere else, which, which tells you something. The, the, the quality of their work has done the legwork for them. So they might not be funded yet, but I think in the end, they will get more value from the funding because they've, you know, they've really put in their effort and they've, been, they've not been swayed by all these likes on social media and, and all the gossip shows. There's no gossip show about sculptors, you know. There's no uncut for painters, you know. But for music, there's everything, you know, what socks you're wearing, what, nothing to do with music at all. It is important because the truth is, creatively speaking, the country has not produced enough quality music-wise and it has nothing to do with funding. Funding for this industry has been immense. Um, every company here is, does jingles, does this, you know, there's sh road shows. They put so much money into music and that has given little time, especially to those who, who look good or those who be as scandalous as possible or those who have notoriety. Not necessarily good musicians. I think this whole COVID pandemic. I've been speaking to a lot of musicians around the world. Many of them realized how important, one, how important music is, two, how important it is to remain, you know, to stay the course, 
but also COVID has been a sieve. In 2005, a guitarist once told me that Ugandan music is like a store that is full of merchandise, quantity. There's, there's, a, there's, there's way too much music, but one day something is gonna happen where a sieve will start sieving out, you know? The quality will go through the, the sieve and the quantity will remain and be thrown away. I think COVID is doing that already for the arts, and definitely for music. So um, I keep stressing that musicians or artists should do everything possible, not to join anything that divides opinions or divides the people. Let me put it that way, not opinions, but musicians are always left hanging when something happens. Whenever there's a change, musicians are left hanging. And I've seen it so many times. He was talking about Bob Marley, who you know, had to leave his country for you know, 10 years. Why? Because politicians tried to use him, then tried to kill him, then he had to leave. I know so many who left Jamaica. Because in the 1972 elections, they used polit uh, musicians to bring a seemingly socialist government into power. They used Rastafarians, they used musicians. Songs like Best, Better Must Come came out, and the politician won. Soon after winning, when he was asked, would you let some of the Rastas come and work, you know, you know, in the government? Maybe take some job. They've helped you win. And the guys with that hair and those beards, I don't think we can. And these are the guys who had helped him win, you know? So from that day, a lot of musicians in Jamaica, if you listen to any reggae song, they just can't stand. Musicians will, should always stay out of it. Be a mirror to society. Sing a song like One Love or sing a song like Get Up, Stand Up and Fight and leave it that way. Like Bob Marley used to say, you throw the corn, but do not call anybody to eat the corn. The chicken will come and eat you. Not, you just throw the corn out there. Let the message go out. The reason why we lack renowned musicians known globally is because we do not have sophisticated music. Not complicated. We still lack having that feeling retire kind of level that is coming out of our fraternity. Not an industry yet. We do not have a music industry. We have a music society. Because the music industry has a functioning copyright law. The music industry has charts that are based on music sales. We don't have that. You know, so we are still a society that needs to grow. And the only way we are going to grow is if we invest not in mansions, not in clothes, but in the craft. You must invest in the craft. You must get better as a musician. Everything will take care of itself. Thank you so much.